Welcome to Allen High School. We are moving into our chapter on thermochemistry with an introduction to thermodynamics. So we're going to jump right into the fray on this one. We're going to do what we did in our last unit and we're going to do concepts first and then we will merge a lot of the mathematics together. Now, before we do that, we want to make sure that we know the laws that we have to obey within the context of this unit and life in general. And the first law is that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. Although, and this will be very important when we get into our next topic, we will find that it can be converted. And that's when we talk about electrochemistry. We'll look at that. And certainly there's the concept of uh, nuclear chemistry and a variety of other applications. Now, the second law of thermodynamics brings in a term that you've heard before and we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail. And that's the concept of entropy. Entropy is a measure of the disorder. And we briefly talked about it in... Uh, pre-AP, but I'm hoping you know it a little bit from physics. So it's a measure of the disorder, or I like to talk about freedom, because we can discuss entropy in terms of freedom of motion, and freedom of arrangements, and some people like to think of it in terms of probabilities. So we'll get into it in just a little bit more detail later, but that gives you a brief glimpse into it. And in any spontaneous, and that's another important concept, any spontaneous process, there is always an increase in the entropy of the universe. As you can imagine, not something we can readily measure, but uh, we can make some estimates. All right, the third law of thermodynamics says, and this is important, you really should know these, that the entropy or randomness, disorder, whatever you want to think about entropy as, of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin is zero. Now, for some of our concepts, we're going to see values of zero for, the, for an element at, say, room temperature, but not for entropy. When we talk about entropy, it's always going to be a positive value um, for the entropy of a substance. Now, let's get into this in a little bit more detail now that we've laid forth the laws. Uh, we're going to talk first about the introductory terms as we discuss the players and the lingo that we're going to be using. And then we're going to talk about the key terms on which we'll do some mathematics with those. Now, a state function depends only on our final and initial conditions. Now, in this case here, sorry my picture got shifted on me, the total energy in going from a solid to the gaseous state or the vapor, that energy is the same whether we go through the liquid phase or whether we skip the liquid and sub set up conditions for sublimation. It only depends on our final and initial. Now, remember, in chemistry, delta is final minus initial with all situations but one. And we are finally going to see that one situation where we're going to talk about initial minus final. Now, the energy is the ability to do work. And work is defined as a force working over a distance. So no distance, no force. No, well, excuse me, no distance, no work. So here we see these little guys pushing a rock up and over the hill, and they are working. Now, this is important. Work is not a state function. Work depends on the pathway. It's not just important to know final minus initial. For example, um, in terms of your learning, that's a state function. I care that you started out at home and made it to my classroom when you were supposed to. And then we're set up to learn. Now, the gas or work that was involved in getting to that point is dependent on the path. 
It depends on whether you stop and pick up your friends or stop at Max's for donuts or things like that. So that depends upon your pathway. But the actual learning, I care that you made it out of bed and got to my classroom on time. Now, potential energy in chemistry is a little bit different. We're going to focus on the energy due to the ability to form attractive forces. Now, when attractive forces form, energy is released. So we have the potential to gain some energy when that energy is released when we form attractive forces. Remember, when bonds are broken, it takes energy. When bombs form, it releases energy. So gases, we could say, have a high potential energy because they still have a high potentiality or ability to form intermolecular forces. Energy is released when attractive forces and bonds form. Okay. In other words, bond formation is an exothermic process. Solids have a low potential energy. They've realized their potential. They're already forming fairly strong intermolecular forces, just to give you an example. We won't spend a lot of time on potential energy. We will spend quite a bit of time on kinetic energy and heat energy. So let's move into that. Heat energy is the transfer of energy between two objects with differing kinetic energy. And hence, because temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, we look at energy transfer between objects at two different temperatures. In other words, they have you have two systems or objects that have differing average kinetic energy. And temperature is a measure of that average kinetic energy. Now, the concept of internal energy, most books will use E. A few might use U for this. We're not going to see it much. I'm briefly going to mention it. It's not that it's not important. It is very important. It's the sum of the heat and the work involved in a process or a transformation. Uh, we just don't talk about it much at this level. And I'm going to save that so that you have something fun and unique to study when you make it to physical chemistry, if you make it that far in your chemistry journey. Now, I heard this term when I was watching a video out of Canada. I really like the, this little chemistry connection series out of Canada. And we want to make a clear distinction here. The standard temperature and pressure of thermodynamics is not the same as it is for gas laws. And so what I liked about this movie is they were very careful to state that it was standard ambient. Ambient's roughly room temperature. Um, so instead of zero degrees Celsius, it's 25 degrees Celsius. Now we are still at the one atmosphere. And I will do my best to call it standard ambient temperature and pressure so you don't get confused with STP that we use in our gas laws. Now, that was some of the uh, back players, uh, background players in this, the minor roles. No, I guess I shouldn't say minor roles. I was stretching my analogy. Let's talk about the main players. The only reason they're really main players is because that's where we're going to focus our mathematics on. Uh, but remember, concepts are so deeply important because cranking out a mathematical equation isn't very valuable if you don't understand the underlying structure and function and transformations that are going on at the chemical level. All right, enthalpy. We have seen so many times. Enthalpy is the heat energy at constant pressure. Most of our work is going to be at constant pressure. And so we'll have a tendency to interchange delta H and Q at constant pressure. I'll deal with maybe one situation, a bomb calorimeter, where it is not the same. Enthalpy is a state function, final minus initial. Exothermic, this is a very quick uh, review for the sake of your AP test, because if you haven't started reviewing for that AP test, 
We are in major, major trouble. We've got to get on the ball about that, kiddos. Exothermic is when heat is released or given off by a process. Now, this means that the surroundings are going to get hotter because it's released. So if you're holding a beaker, the, your hand becomes part of the surroundings and the surroundings will become hotter. Your container will feel hot and your hand will feel hot. This is actually the favorable process. Now that doesn't mean we won't have endothermic that are spontaneous, um, but this is actually the favorable situation. And this is the summary that you saw in pre-AP chemistry, especially those of you from last year when we changed our curriculum. Sorry about that little blip there. All right, so that's a nice little picture that gives you an indicator of what we're talking about. Endothermic is when heat is absorbed in, within a process. Heat is required. It's positive. This, the surroundings are going to get cold. Now, if you remind me, I really will do a little demo on this. It's a fun demo. I, I, I dislike the fact that it uses barium, but it's pretty cool because you see a spontaneous endothermic process. Um, the heat gets absorbed by the system, so your hand and the container will feel colder. Again, I'm really hoping this is review. And let's summarize what we're talking about here. This was a chart that I developed. It, the ways we like to communicate enthalpy changes. Verbally. What we would say verbally is that energy is absorbed if it's endothermic. So you'll see those words in the statement or the question. Energy is absorbed in the following process. That's your clue that it's endothermic. Exothermic means energy is released. Okay? Observationally, when you're in the lab, this type of thing would go into your evidence to support a claim. The temperature of the surroundings decreases, gets colder for endothermic, whereas for exothermic, the temperature of the surroundings increases as heat is released into the surroundings. Symbolically, delta H is going to be positive here, negative here. Within a reaction, if it's endothermic heat, sometimes the actual value, sometimes just the word, would be written on a reaction so reactant side, and heat would be written on the product side. Sorry transformation into Mimeo wasn't real nice to me there. Heat is the product within a reaction. And then one last thing before we end this introduction portion of the video for enthalpy at least, is graphically endothermic. Potential energy of the reactants is lower than the potential energy of the products. So heat is absorbed. So this is potential energy on the y-axis here. Now you're used to seeing this like this, right? It's the same thing. We're just not showing the activation energy curve on this. IB especially likes these, so I wanted to make sure we showed these. You're used to seeing the activation energy. I'm trying to focus on my final and my initial states because it's a state function. Okay, in our next video, we will continue this discussion by bringing entropy and ultimately free energy into the picture. Until then, this is signing off.